glad you could join me again today. Last week, we looked at the book of Zechariah and how everything will be okay in the end. Today, I want us to look at Malachi. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament, and he has some good news and some bad news. You might have heard a few verses from Malachi. There's chapter 3 and verse 10 where it talks about bringing all the tithes into the storehouse. And there's a little short verse in chapter five, uh, chapter 3 and verse 6 where it says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Other than that, unless you've heard a sermon about Malachi or been to Bible college or read it yourself, you really don't know too much about Malachi. So what is his word of people? What is the sermon that God has given him to bring? Well, basically, he is telling the children of Israel that they're a bunch of hypocrites, that they do half-hearted service, they offer polluted bread and uh, imperfect animals at their altars, they snuff, the Bible says, at the rituals of Judaism, and they weary God with their words. They see serving God as a burden, an absolute waste of time. Oh, well, they go through the motions, they do the things they're supposed to do, but their heart is not in it. And it's a very sad situation. They don't want to recognize their, uh, their wrongdoing. They make all kinds of excuses and begin to argue with God. Well, it reminds me of the Laodicean church in Revelation when they said that they were rich and, and uh, increased in goods and they didn't have need of anything. And yet the Bible says they were wretched and miserable, and poor and blind and naked. They definitely had need, but they didn't want to recognize it. And these Israelites are similar as they argue with God about their service. They question him every time he points out a fault. They, they, they question it. What do you mean? How can you say that? They don't want to um, come clean with God. There's also the Corinthian church that were just so proud about their leniency with sin, but, but God was not proud of them. He called the Laodiceans, the Corinthians, and the children of Israel through Malachi here to repent and to do right. He wanted holiness and sincerity. And the Bible says, as we read there in uh, chapter 3 and verse 6, that he's the Lord. He does not change. You know, that's exactly what he wants from us today. He wants holiness and sincerity. But I'm afraid, as I look at today's culture, the society around us, we are probably more like the Israelites than we imagine. We promote the wrong people, and we fail to take a stand, just turning a blind eye to the things that God calls sin. And Malachi described us perfectly in chapter 3 and verse 15 when he says, And now ye we call the proud happy, yea, they that work wickedness are set up, and yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. It's a sad situation. But God says that if we are the righteous, if we are his children, we will be doing something different. In chapter 3, verses 16 to 18, he says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Now we know that he's talking to the Israelites, but we can apply that to ourselves in our time as well. Because in the face of the godless society that we live in, we as the righteous are to continue to fear God and to reverence and to love him. That's what he's saying. We are to speak one to another, encouraging one another, having fellowship, staying in church, staying under the word of God. You know, it's a hard thing to face the barrage of the world every day at work. The battle is real, isn't it? And we need the strength that we can draw from one another. We need to make fellowship a priority. Have Christian friends and be able to speak one to another about the Lord. And then it says they thought upon his name. You know, the righteous think about God. They meditate. They control their thoughts because they are, their aim is to have a godly life inwardly and outwardly. So we can't let our minds just wander on all kinds of craziness and then come and try to worship God. We need to con control our thinking and think about him. He's near us every day. And what does God do? You know, he notices. He notices what we speak about. He notices what we think about. And then he records our activity. It says he puts them in a book of remembrance. And he will reward 
the faithful because we are his jewels. Do you know that old song? When he cometh, when he cometh to make up his jewels, we will be a part of the crown. You know, keeping our thoughts and our words focused on the Lord gives us discernment because the more we think about him, the wiser we become. The Bible says we become wiser than our teachers. When we think upon the Lord, when we dwell upon him, when wisdom becomes the thing that we seek, then God gives us wisdom. He gives us discernment between what is righteous and what is evil. And we begin to recognize the difference of those that are serving the Lord and those that are not. There's a little portion in 1 Corinthians 5 that warns us to not even keep company with those who do not walk in God's way. To not even keep company. You know what that means? It means to not play with them, to not eat with them, to not even go into business with them. And why? Because God knows that if we keep poor company, it will lead us away from him. Well, as I began to finish up the book of Malachi and looking at it some more, I found a little key that I want to show you that will probably, as God would know, will help us to keep ourselves in the right place in the culture that we're in. And I think you'll be surprised what that key is. According to Malachi, the key is our family. It's how we treat each other in our homes, and especially as Malachi is talking about how the husband and the father leads his home. And why do I say that? Listen to this. When Malachi begins to talk in uh, chapter 2, and he talks about it three different times, he says that the husband is not supposed to deal treacherously with his wife. You know what that means? Dealing treacherously. It means to be deceitful or to be unfaithful. And he tells you why. Because she is your companion. The wife is the companion. And you are one in the Lord. So do not deal treacherously with the wife of, the, of your youth, the Bible says. So God here is commanding a strong marriage in the face of hypocrisy. And why? Because marriage is a picture of Christ's unfailing love for the church. A love that they are not exhibiting here in the book of Malachi. They are unfaithful. They are deceitful toward God and deceitful toward his service. So the picture, he takes the picture of marriage in that sense and shows what Israel is doing. So that's a, a picture for us to realize the importance of our home. In chapter 4 and verse 6, then, he speaks of the fathers turning their hearts to the children and the children turning their hearts to the father. You know, a broken home, as sad as it is, and then a harsh, unloving uh, father breaks the image of our loving, heavenly father toward his children. God is a father who lovingly cares and pays attention to his children. And if we pull this idea all the way through the book of Ma Ma Malachi, this is what God is saying. He's saying that the children of Israel's half-hearted love, disrespect for God's commandments, and lackadaisical service wearied the father. It drove a wedge and it marred the image of a happy, loving family. God's desire is for us to love him wholeheartedly, just as he loves us. And this love between a man and a wife and the father and the children makes for a happy, strong, and safe home in every culture. And a sincere love between God and his people will bring reward. Are you ready for one more promise? One more little bit of good news? Chapter 4 and verse 2 says, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth. Proverbs says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If we need healing, we need to turn to the wisdom of the Lord. It's my prayer that God would... Help us turn our hearts toward him, that he would heal our families. And as we encourage one another, we can survive and have the good news, the good hope of salvation, the good hope of Christ in this crazy, messed up world. I'll see you next week.